Okay, Kano, when I say action, you fly away. Okay. Wait, I didn't say action yet. Take that, evil monster. And then gotta keep on punching yourself. So, no need to thank me. It's my duty to save the world. I'll be back in a flash. My biggest strength is that I'm a hard worker and I always give 110%. I think it really stems from my passions in life and it'll make me a great law student at your university. My greatest weakness? Well, it's probably that I don't express my opinions enough or tell others when I disagree with them. Oh, that's a great question. Well, as a president of College Law Society, I started society's First alumni mentoring program. That's a good answer. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. The Law School Admission Board was quite impressed with your application. This final interview is our last chance to get to know you a little bit better. So John, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, I was born and raised right here in the city, and I'm the younger of two brothers. And ever since I can remember, I've wanted to be a lawyer. And I think this really Before began with- Before we continue, with let me explain how I got here. Debate in high That's me, John Lee. Yep. Of the thousands of names that my parents could have given me, they chose John Lee. According to the 2010 census, 5% of the U.S. population is Asian American. That's 15 million people. Also, let's assume a 50-50 gender split, and they say that Lee is the most common Asian name at 30%. And it feels like one out of every 10 Asian guys I meet is also John. So, according to my calculations, there are another 224,999 other John Lees roaming this earth. I guess you can say that from birth, I was destined to live a pretty typical Asian life. For my fifth birthday, I asked for a baseball mitt. Instead, I received a stethoscope. When I turned nine, my parents decided they were putting too much pressure on me to become a doctor, so they let me choose. They said, I can be a lawyer too if I wanted. When I was 14, my parents' gift to me was an SAT book. It was an interesting childhood to say the least. By the time I was ready for college, the birthday presents stopped coming. Well, sort of. Surprise! <laughs> oh, thank, thanks, Mom. It's good for you, huh? Come down for dinner. John? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll check later. <clears throat> so, uh, you excited to graduate tomorrow? <clears throat> Heading off to college soon, huh? I guess so. I think I'd be more excited if I was studying film at USC. No, USC is a very good film school. But you study pre-law at Georgetown. Much better choice. Mom, you know that pre-law is such an unoriginal major. That's what all the kids say when they can't think of anything else to study. So they're pre-law or pre-med. Listen, you need to think about future. You need a respectable career, hmm? How are you gonna... You wanna study filmmaking, you study as hobby. Mom, I told you, it's more than just a hobby for me. That being said, Dad does love movies. No joking. It's very serious. You think about your future. How are you going to make money for your family? But when we get old, you take care of us. Daniel, he's so happy. He's happy studying pre-med at Columbia, IB League. You'd be more like Daniel, you'd be happy. Oh, don't say that. 
Happy, happy, happy! Whatever. John, character is important in our profession. Can you describe someone who has influenced you greatly in your life? Well, that's easy. That'd be my older brother, Daniel. You see, ever since we were young, he's been there for me. And I love my older brother, Daniel, but we couldn't be more different. He was a model son, loved practicing the piano, was dedicated to his studies, and was born to be a doctor. Me? Let's just say we're pretty different. But regardless of our differences, we've always been best friends, and he's the only one who's ever supported my dreams. Hey bro, you wanna play some ball tonight? You sure you wanna get schooled again? Let's go. Alright, I'll be done in a sec. Alright, let's switch. See what you got, little bro. You ready for this? What's up? What's up? Come on. <laughs> what's up? What's up? You ain't ready for this. I seen you in your diaper. Oh, you're playing oh, rough. You've gotten a lot better, huh? It's because you're becoming an old man. <laughs> what's that lead? We're talking now. We're talking. Here we go. Come here, come. What? What? What do you got? Oh! Oh! Come here now, huh? Nice shot. Not bad. Woo. Not bad for an old man. Hey, what mom said earlier, don't worry about it. Georgetown's a great school. They got a good film program, and the girls are even better. <laughs> so you know what you're doing this summer? Yeah, I was uh, thinking about doing that service trip to Africa that you mentioned. You should bring a camera with you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do you ever feel like your life's been mapped out for you already? Like we're just coloring in the lines? Yeah, life's kind of like that. I just want to do something more. Do something, do something great, you know? Just make sure you're ready to take the opportunities as they come. Just like basketball, take the open shot. I never miss. <laughs> hey, I got you something. I figure it'll come in handy. When you get inspired by all those great ideas of yours. Thanks, Daniel. Don't use it until you get to school. You can write down all the things you want to tell me. I'm sure you'll have a lot of great, new, and interesting experiences. Yeah. One more game? Best out of three? You're on! <laughs> Daniel was right. I spent four amazing weeks that summer in Kenya, which sparked a passion for documentary filmmaking that I never expected. And Daniel was right about Georgetown, too. They had a great film program and some pretty cute girls. In fact, I discovered this on the first day of school. Like most college students, class time was often used to catch up on sleep. Unfortunately, the class after Psych 101 was... Good morning, everyone. And welcome to your first class in the introduction of the female anatomy. My name is Professor Mudd, and today we will be discussing the fallopian tubes. <laughs> Does anyone know what this is? Anyone? These are the infamous ovaries. And you do not want to get me started on the menstrual cycle. Because the menstrual cycle is the beginning of the very end. It is the gate to a land that you do not want to go to, fellas. Her name is Sarah. Yeah, she's really cool. We've been a couple dates so far, I think. Mm -hmm. I think you'd like her a lot. I think I'm gonna ask her out tonight. Oh, here she comes. Wish me luck, I'll call you later, bye. It's coming so easily 
Sarah was unlike any girl I've ever met. She was smart, passionate, and beautiful. She continuously challenged me to become a better person and never failed to put a smile on my face. I never intended to date the first girl I met at college. But sometimes love doesn't work out the way we expect. Just a couple of final questions. It's our decisions that make us who we are. Can you describe a time in your life that you had to make a really difficult decision? Robert Frost once said, two roads diverged in a wood and I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. Now, as I prepare to graduate college, while I'd like to heed Mr. Frost's advice, I seriously doubt that he had Asian parents blocking the path less traveled. Also, it doesn't help that Sarah was now literally dragging me down the well-beaten path to attend law school and ultimately to live in middle-class suburbia. Hey, baby. Hey. I got you a little something. Don't get me wrong. I love Sarah, this but... Amazing. This is perfect. How do I look? It looks wonderful. <laughs> I'll definitely wear it. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. What are you up to? Um, I was actually just journaling a little bit, and uh, I actually finished that application for the film program I talked to you about earlier. I thought you weren't applying to that program. You know, I wasn't going to, but the more I thought about it, the more I felt like it's just, you know, something I should do. Haven't we talked about this already? What about going to law school? You know you'd be such a good lawyer. Look, I know this means a lot to you, but what about our plans to live together next year? I feel like you're just thinking about yourself. But... I'm sorry. Can we talk about this later? I'm gonna go. That call from my mom marked the worst day of my life. Daniel was only 23 when he passed away. My parents convinced everyone that he had died in his sleep. But the truth was, Daniel suffered from depression and ended up taking his own life. To this day, I still don't fully understand why he did it. We had been best friends for my entire life, but I never saw this coming. I wish I could have known. I wish I could have had one more minute with him. Just one, to convince him not to do it. But now that he's gone, I miss him so much. The rest of my senior year was a bit of a daze. But after Daniel's death, I felt like my entire universe was thrown off balance. I still ended up applying to that film program, but didn't think too much of it. Sarah and I never discussed the program or our fight again. I tried to spend more time with her, and she was incredibly supportive and understanding. But a couple of weeks after Daniel's death, and the day of my final law school interview, I received some unexpected news. I guess what? I got into that film. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. I'll call you. I'll call you after my interview. Okay. Hey John, I'm not sure when you'll find this note, but I figure you'll find it when the time is right. Just wanted to say 
that I know mom and dad can be really tough on you sometimes. It's because they worry about you and think they're doing what's best for you. You know, I admire you so much and it's encouraging to see your passion for film. That kind of passion is something I wish I had more of and is what makes life worth living. Don't worry. One day mom and dad will come around too. I love you, bro. Love, Daniel. John, why do you want to be a lawyer? John? John? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what was the question? I was asking, why do you want to be a lawyer? Dear Daniel, you've always been there for me and supported my passion for filmmaking. Even as kids, you helped me make my first film and even wore that ridiculous superhero costume. You'll always be my hero. Thank you for believing in me and teaching me how to live my life to the fullest and encouraging me to take the road less traveled. I know I wouldn't be here without you and for that, I just want to thank you. you so much. As I take this next step in life, I have no idea what lies ahead. But thanks to you, I do know this. A life with passion is a life worth living. Left, right, left. <laughs>